Hi there. Today we are in the Butterfly and Moth collection and this is David Lees, uh, one of the museum scientists here. And we've been talking about vampire moths. Um, if you haven't seen that video, do check it out. It's in the link in the description below. Um, but yeah, today we're just going to dive a bit deeper into these blood-sucking moths, which is a pretty, pretty bizarre behaviour for moths to have, I, I assume. Is it common? In fact, it's, uh, it's very rare. Mm. Um, out of all of the uh, moths in the world, there's about 150,000. Uh, uh, only one genus is known to attack animals and drink their blood, and that's the genus Calyptra. Do they go after any certain animals, or do they go after humans as well? There are uh, fairly few observations, but one scientist has spent his, his life time studying these organisms. And out of about 135 observations he made at night, only 12 were on humans, whereas most were on hooved mammals, ungulates, mm. such as elephants, rhinoceros, tapirs, buffaloes, and antelopes. Seems like pretty thick skin for them to drill into for something that's so small. Do they have any specialised ways to do that? In order to drill into such thick skin as some of these animals, they, um, they rotate their head as they're drilling and they can separate the two halves of the proboscis. And they use the uh, barbs on these rather vicious straw-like devices to actually, peer, actually tear the skin mm. and allow them to, to sip a lot of blood. So they're actually um, rather damaging to the tissues. Mm. But usually they will go not for this thick skin, but for a human with soft, delicate skin, oh, okay. not with a lot of hair. <laughs> right. or they, they will uh, go for a, a, it sounds rather disgusting, a, a sore or open wound on an animal. Ah, I see. And okay. then they will drill their proboscis down in this rotational movement, mm. several millimetres under the skin to, oh to drink the blood. And they've been observed to feed for up to an hour, but uh, usually about 12 minutes. Yeah, OK, wow, that's pretty, pretty gnarly. Um, <laughs> uh, do you have any specimens here where you can see the proboscis? Well, as you can see, we've got quite a diversity of moths yeah. here of different sizes. Uh, they're rather beautiful looking. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, because they didn't know about this remarkable behaviour uh, in the past, they didn't mount the moths with the proboscis mm. uh, extended. There's one here where we can actually just examine the specimen. You can see the proboscis is still rather rolled oh, up. Oh, yeah, it's curled under, up like underneath this. Underneath this, the snout of the moth, which is the, the labial palps, it's called. So uh, the, this proboscis at the tip has uh, some barbs and hooks and blood can actually raise these tiny barbs and hooks in order to create more blood flow. Mm, okay, so, so it, it uh, makes it more spiky yeah, when it's also, inside the animal. In order to, for the moth to get out, it has to be able to lower those barbs right, as well. Right, okay. Or it would be stuck <laughs> in the, uh, the animal. Got it. And is yeah. it known why moths, some moths do this behaviour? What do they get out of drinking blood? Why do they choose it over you know, fruits or nectar or something it's like that? Th actually, it's part of a much more general phenomenon. I don't know whether you've heard of mud puddling in butterflies. No, I haven't. So males of many species of butterfly and moth do actually aggregate. You may have seen films in the tropics of these aggregations called mud puddle groups of butterflies. Um, and moths do the same at night, some species of moths. And it was thought by scientists that they probably do this uh, in order to get nutrients from the the soil. Oh, okay, so um, they're actually landing on the soil and, and it's found sucking they, something up. They actually go for areas where, say, cattle have been urinating, mm. and they will uh, actually specific, particularly go for the, the salt <laughs> in this. They find it very... Okay, so it's the salt that's what they're um, usually after. Yeah, and oh, it's yeah. strange that it's only the males that do this. Mm. So it was thought that actually these salts and other nutrients are a kind of gift to the females when they're mating. Okay. So the females would benefit from these nutrients Urine in and order blood. to <laughs> grow the fertilize and grow the eggs. Right. Uh, so that romantic. Sounds rather strange. In yeah. a way, perhaps a, a little romantic. Yeah, I guess yes. so. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess it could be. 
uh, just some salt. I've never been gifted salt before. By H have you heard of salt licks in the tropics? <laughs> um, Think parrots. Okay. Parrots go to salt licks in the tropics because salts is are... Is that like a rock that's very salty? Or is it... Uh, they Where are, are they <laughs> exposed cliffs usually oh, which have I got see. salty rocks in them. Right. Okay. Everyone's and after the salt. <laughs> people probably have heard of goats going for salt licks. Yes. There's some yeah. viral videos about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. in the tropics, salt's actually very rare. You don't mm. get them from fruit, for example, or um, most food sources, unless you're a carnivore. Mm. So moths are not generally carnivores. Mm. So um, rather than make the females get these things, the, the males very generously spend their time <laughs> seeking these substances out. Okay. And it may actually, in some way, improve their success with females if they get lots of salts. Right, yeah, yeah. So, so is yeah. it just these... So is it just vampire moths that I've seen to drink blood or pier pierce and drink blood or are there well, others? Well, actually, there are some rather anecdotal observations mm -hmm. of butterflies drinking blood. Wow, OK. There is an observation of a common butterfly drinking droplets of blood from a horse. So it's more of an opportunistic kind of behavior, or do you reckon? Well, probably. And mm. actually, these butterflies don't have any specialized proboscis. They mm. just have a normal, a smooth proboscis. <laughs> yeah. Nothing uh, at all uh, vicious about their proboscis. Yeah. So it's thought that they um, actually do this, perhaps opp opportunistically, also to get salts. Yeah. Um, and it's only in one genus of moths in the world that this behavior has evolved. Yeah, and I remember you mentioning these ones sort of drink salt mm. from eyes. Can you talk a little bit more about that? We discovered the first um, moth to drink the tears from sleeping birds. Sleeping in birds? In Madagascar. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's one of these, actually, uh, and uh, it was thought at the time maybe that that is a specialised behaviour pattern mm. in Madagascar, but we've discovered recently that it also occurs in Africa. Again, only the males are involved, and they actually use their uh, proboscis to get between the membranes of the bird's eye. And there is actually a species here from Africa called Hemiceratoides sitaka. Can you see those palps? Oh, yeah, they're like they're, they're two They're actually like hooks. hooks. And this moth <laughs> not only has a similar proboscis to the Calyptra vampire moth, yeah. um, which is barbed at the tip, but it has these hooks on the palps, which are used to prise open the eyelids of a bird, rather like a ophthalmologist okay. uh, examining you in a, uh, <laughs> as a patient. God. So, yeah. <laughs> um, they have some rather interesting behaviours. We actually named some of these moths. Right. This one is called Avi molestum, which means a bird pesterer. And this one is called Ornithopotus, which means a bird drinker. Right. Avi molesta. <laughs> Avi molestum, yes. It seems like a very apt <laughs> name. Yes. Um, but yeah, with the vampire moths, they're uh, drinking blood, obviously. Do they, do they, is there a risk of them spreading diseases in a similar way that mosquitoes do? That's a very interesting question, yeah. Um, so it is actually speculated that their the, um, proboscides, which are about, um, where well, they're very like a hypodermic needle. In fact, these moths have been described as flying syringes. Oh, really? <laughs> so unlike vampire moths, which yeah. actually, with their teeth, they, they bite into the skin and then they lap up the blood, or unlike uh, uh, mos mosquitoes, they, well, a bit like mosquitoes, they actually use their proboscis to, mm. to penetrate the skin like a needle. Uh, so they actually don't lap up the blood, they actually, um, suck it up. Right, and okay. so this proboscis is, um, uh, uh, it is possible that, that uh, inter the intervening parts of the proboscis, because they remember there's two parts of the proboscis, mm. uh, could actually have tiny droplets of blood, which could be a bit like a reused hypodermic needle. Okay. <laughs> it, it might actually yeah. transfer viruses, bacteria, right. in the case of um, mosquitoes, it's a, it's a protozoan called plasmodium that is actually uh, transmitted um, between infected organisms, mm. humans for example. And in the case of ticks, mm. it's, it's a bacterium that causes Lyme disease. But it's thought with these moths, the behaviour is so rare that it's not really a reliable 
organism to have developed a very precise association with, with a pathogen. Yes, okay, got you. So it, more likely it's uh, just that they could possibly transmit viruses or bacteria, but it's not been proven by scientists yet. Yeah. And there's even uh, a speculation that, that um, AIDS might first have been transmitted between a monkey and a human mm. by the one Calyptra species that exists in tropical oh, wow. Africa. But this is complete speculation. Okay, okay. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they have the potential to do it, but we don't have it. Actually, most of these moths occur in either the tropics of Asia mm. uh, or uh, um, uh, tropical Africa. And it's not very yeah. likely that you would be attacked by one. But it's thought that this uh, drilling for blood actually evolved from fruit piercing. So the proboscises that have these modifications are also suitable for piercing the thick skin of fruit. Yeah, I feel Actually, like yeah. I would opt for fruit yeah. juice over blood <laughs> if I could. Yeah. I had the choice as a vampire moth, but... Uh, and um. indeed. <laughs> Um, the males will often attack fruits. They can actually cause damage as a, as a crop pest. Oh. And the females always go for fruit. They never go for blood. So the females are much less unsavoury habits. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't think yeah. the moths need to be any more intimidating than they already are. But yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for talking to me. It's a pleasure. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to be having nightmares for weeks. If you enjoyed that video, please let us know down in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more natural history content.